Well, this is the first mission to give me trouble on this particular difficulty setting in this run, hence why this clip is longer than the usual mission for this game. Anyway, it seems this mission will let us find that casualty list that M mentioned back in the previous mission. <laughs> you know, I agree. After the crappy way Bond surrendered at the end of the previous mission, he deserves every bit of crap that M throws at him. That was just jarringly docile considering we were essentially a super soldier just seconds before that cutscene. I know it's an older game, but come on, that was just such an insulting way to capture us at the start of this mission. Star Wars Dark Forces did a better job justifying us being captured, and that game was made years before GoldenEye. Sure, this game was made for an old uh, console, while Dark Forces was a PC game, but that doesn't change the fact that, narratively speaking, us being captured here was executed very poorly. I'm not too sure you can call someone a cellmate if there are bars blocking the pair of you off. Sure, these guys apparently didn't feel the need to give their prisoners beds, but at least they had the damn good sense to make sure that the woman and the absurdly seductive male agent were kept in separate cells. I'm not entirely sure Bond would be thinking of escape if that was the case. Well, Natalia is a lot more eager to trust Bond in this game than she was in the movie, though considering how many times we're going to have to escort her in this game, I damn well hope she trusts us in a hurry. The lady certainly has a point there. These guys clearly intend to use us as the fall guys for what they've done, and I've got to admit, if it wasn't for the fact that we somehow managed to gain a gadget that was never hinted at before, and we certainly didn't have in the previous mission, we'd have no chance to avoid being executed and letting Janice get away without any suspicion. Literally the only use for this gadget in the entire game is to grab that one key in this mission, and you only need one charge to actually do it, though I certainly appreciate that we have four extra charges for anyone who doesn't know what they're doing the first time they get through this mission. Right, too much to hope that the safe key was in the same room as the safe. The enemies around here certainly seem to be paying attention to the fact that we're spraying shots with an unsilenced weapon. Guess I got far too used to them being pretty damn unaware of their surroundings. But then, this is the halfway point for the game, assuming you don't count the bonus missions. Makes sense that they're up in their skills at this point. Bloody hell was hoping we'd cut them down to a more manageable number by now. Instead, we're getting hit from multiple angles! What?! I could have sworn one of the things we grabbed from the numerous corpses was a keycard that lets us open these doors! Come on! How can that camera have seen us from this far away? 
Lozzy Hill definitely no surprise that this attempt will become the first on-screen death I go through for this game. The alarms summon the more durable guys that are just gonna keep coming until we finish the mission, which is far less likely since they arrived before I even managed to get out of the bloody basement. Well, at least this was a good way to show off the blood-soaked camera. It's funny, a lot of games these days use Call of Duty's idea of the screen getting ready the closer you are to death, but I can't help thinking Call of Duty got the idea from death literally soaking your screen in blood from Goldeneye. As a side note, when Bond falls repeatedly, everyone else acts like time is still moving forward, not temporarily rewinding to show the moment of death from different angles like I think the game designers intended. Still, Taking down 50 guys before being taken down was kinda satisfying. Not that the uh, number of enemies we kill before we're taken down really means much of anything. Anyway, let's try that again, only without getting ripped apart from multiple directions this time. Never can consistently get the throwing knives, there's probably some trick to get them all the time, but considering I tend to stick with the AK-47 in this mission, I'm not sure it really matters. Okay, time to settle in for a bit while the enemies try to swarm into the room to deal with the prisoner that's openly slaughtering their guys left and right. In a way, it's more convenient when they just line up to die. Of course, it would be better if we had some way to tell if someone could possibly come at us from behind or something. Hell, just how many games is that a genuine problem, since many of them just turn missions into a complete hallway? And yes, I'm well aware of the irony of uh, complaining about hallways when we're fighting in a hallway, but you know what I mean, the constantly coming from one direction mindlessly sort of crap. Apparently, the guy with the keycard for these doors is directly behind them. Again, how often do you see something like that in a game? Sure, they stupidly opened the door for us, so not having the keycard didn't really matter, but still. Hard to blame them when this is the same man that surrendered the instant he walked through the door in the previous mission. Yeah, kinda bitter about that camera after that previous attempt. Again, I'm amazed that shooting the hat off someone doesn't hurt them, considering that hat wasn't actually made to stop bullets. I know, it's a limit in the game, just like so many things blowing up when destroyed by enough gunfire. Still feels worth chuckling about, though. Well, 
at least we're doing a good job of making sure we're not getting blasted from multiple angles this time. Sure, there's still quite a few guards for us to deal with in this place, even if we don't have to worry about the alarm sending in infinitely spawning reinforcements that are more durable than the guys who are always here. But they've been coming in manageable numbers at the moment, and I'm pretty sure that the enemy's pretty damn depleted by this point. As a side note, I am very much impressed with how they expanded on the interior of the base since the last time we were here. Considering the previous mission outright removed assets in an area we've already explored, it's nice to see they did a genuine expansion for this one. Turrets are going to be a much bigger problem for us uh, near the end of the game, but at this point, they're pretty simple to handle. We're certainly not going to have the luxury of being able to easily creep up on them at angles they can't detect us from as we destroy them when we get to the final three missions. But we still got plenty of game to fight through before we reach the most frustrating section. At least it's frustrating for me. Am I the only one who's curious about the little repeating snippets we see on some of the scattered screens in the game? Eh, not that I think they're bad, just always wonder where they're coming from, why they're here. Could have sworn that we'd have the bloody key by now. Guess the guy who can unlock the safe is still in a room we haven't cleared yet. It's a good thing those servers don't mean anything to us on this difficulty. Funny how the enemy's fire can destroy various objects like our bullets can, but they don't leave any bullet holes, and they can't hurt any of their own guys. But for us, friendly fire can be a major mission-crippling issue. I could have sworn that opening the safe was one of our objectives on this difficulty. Ah well, it wouldn't be the first time in this game that we did an objective that was technically for a higher difficulty of the game. It's not like it's doing us any harm, anyway. Okay, a lot more men left than I expected in the final room. But at least they seem pretty unaware of the fact that we've just slaughtered absolutely everyone else in the building. I swear, sometimes the awareness of these guys... I mean, I mean seriously, their lack of awareness is mind-boggling at times. Some of them react to loud noises and others don't. Some react to their buddies getting shot beside them or bullets smacking into a wall nearby. And others don't. You'd think after all these years, I've had a firmer grasp of enemy behaviors in this game. Right. All that's left is to get Natalia over here to check the computer, then get out of here. If only more escort missions would let you clear the way before your painfully helpless and at times stupid ally has to get from point A to point B. Apparently, she has absolutely nothing to say when we open the door for her. Excuse me for expecting some measure of thanks for getting her out of her cell when she thinks she's going to be executed for a crime she didn't commit. She doesn't even seem to be in a hurry to leave. Now imagine having to protect her as dozens of enemies come pouring out from multiple directions at once, and she's walking that damn slowly through the fire.
Lady, while there's nothing to really give you a sense of urgency right now, I'd still appreciate it if you got a bloody move on! Thank you for finally remembering you're capable of moving faster than a very sleepy walk. Good thing the dead bodies faded away before she got to the console, though I have a feeling she wouldn't have given a shit about tripping over a pair of bastards right there. Eh... I don't really see too much of a need to hurry out since the Golden Eye causes an EMP. He wouldn't be able to actually damage the bunker with him. Though I suppose the movie managed to believably have the base get pretty ruined by an aircraft being shut down as it came to investigate what was going on here and ended up crashing directly into the base. And with our luck, there would probably be an aircraft that lands right on top of Bond if we stayed in there long enough for the timer to reach zero.